Hi everybody, I'm Lee of CJ Drill and today we're going to be doing a brake and rotor job. And what I want to say to you is you may never ever do a brake job. You may watch this video and say, I, Lee, I don't think I can do this. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know your own comfort zone. But I would really encourage you to watch this video all the way to the end so that when you take your car in to be serviced for brakes, you'll know exactly what the mechanic is talking about. So, let's get started. Now before you do a brake job, it's always a good idea to open the cap up on the brake fluid reservoir, and that's what this is. Now, before you jack up the vehicle, you want to break the seal on the nuts first. And the reason why you do that is because if you try to break the seal on the lug nuts while the car if the vehicle's jacked up, the tire's just going to spin on you. So it's always a good idea to get a, get a start. Okay, so uh, I've gotten the lug nuts loosened a little bit, and I did that before I jacked up the car. That way the tire wouldn't spin. The rim is kind of dirty, so I've got some uh, brake cleaner. I'm just going to spray a little bit on a rag and clean this up a little bit so that it'll keep my hands clean. I loosen them a little bit ahead of time to make it easier once the tires off the ground to just remove them. Now one of the other things that I like to do is I always like to take the tire itself and I like to place it underneath the car or vehicle. It's always a good idea to be as safe as possible. Okay so I've got the wheel off and now I want to show you how brakes work. Now really, believe it or not, it's really simplistic. See this tube here? Well that tube distributes brake fluid to the caliper and it sends a signal. Think of it like it's sending a signal, like a brain would send a signal to your hand to contract or open. And that's what a caliper does. Think of it as a hand. Now this is our caliper here, our hand, okay? This here is called the rotor, all right? And what happens is the caliper, the hand, all right? When you want to stop, you step on that brake pedal, it sends a message to the caliper, your hand, okay, to grab onto the rotor and slow it down. Then when you want to let up on the brake, the caliper opens. And it's just that simple. The caliper squeezes the rotor, that's what this is, to slow it down and then opens up when you want to take off. Now the thing to remember is, it's not just the caliper, there are brake pads here. There's a brake pad right here, that's the clip holding the brake in place. And there's also a clip on the back side, a brake on the back side of the caliper. Okay, so what we're going to do today is, I'm going to remove the caliper. I'm just going to take it off the rotor, okay? Then I'm going to remove the rotor, put a new rotor on. So maybe you're asking, well, why am I doing a new rotor? If you get in close, you'll see, see these ridges? Those ridges aren't supposed to be there. The rotor is supposed to be shiny and smooth as glass. Now there are a couple things you can do. You can just pull the rotor off and put a new rotor on or you can do something called turning the rotor. Well I can look at the thickness of this, 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 this rotor here and I can tell that it can't be turned. Turning is machining. They'll just take off a small uh, surface layer of the rotor to make it shiny again, but you can only turn a rotor so many times and this is so badly damaged, it'd just be a lot easier and better for me if I just remove the whole rotor and put a new one on. Now I'm going to show you what a new rotor looks like. If you notice, look at how shiny and smooth, come on in close because I want you to see how smooth the rotor is. See how smooth it is? Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take you on the back side of the caliper, which is this right here. This is our caliper, and our bolts are located in the back of the caliper, okay? There's one at the top, and there's one corresponding bolt at the very bottom. Now there's a little rubber boot here, that's how you know that you're on the right bolt. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a 13 millimeter here, 13 millimeter socket 
on my ratchet, okay? I'm going to place it on there. So I'm just going to loosen it. That's it. That's it. Okay, so that's the first one. Now I'm going to do the second one, which is the one below it. Now it's time to take off the caliper. Remember, this is our caliper here. You always want to make certain that you have uh, a bucket or a crate nearby to rest your caliper on. You don't want to put uh, tension on the uh, brake line here. Okay, now I've just got it almost clear of the rotor here. Now, what I want to say to you is, your caliper isn't always going to slide off real easy. I've had to pry it off a little bit. So if you meet resistance, don't think that it's anything extraordinary. Uh, it can be typical. All right. So there we go. That's it. That's that's all it takes. All right. Now this is my caliper. I want to be very careful of my line here. So I'm going to just set this down. Go set it. Set it down like that, okay? Get that out of the way. Okay, so um, my rotor is not going to just pull off of there, okay? So I'm going to just I'm going to tap it a few times. I'm going to tap it around. Okay, try to loosen up some of that that rust there. Well, what I want to say is this, okay? I freed it. If you notice, I, I chipped the rotor off here. We, we're not concerned with that because we're replacing it. And sometimes it's best, instead of tapping lightly around to loosen up um, rust around the hub here, it makes more sense to get better, you get better uh, leverage on it if you hit further away tap further away and it'll pop this side out. So I had to really hit it hard to pop this rotor off. You may have to do the same thing and that's why I'm telling you. Now once you get it to that point, it just lifts right on off. That's it. Okay, so this is what's called the caliper slide. This is a caliper slide and this is a caliper slide as well. And the caliper rests right here on these slides. And so what you want to do is you want to clean them off completely because you know they get, comp they get corroded and dirty. We want the caliper to be able to slide freely, all right? I like to use a little uh, brake cleaner and I'll spray it right here on this slide here. And wipe that off real good. And sometimes it's a good idea to take, you know, an emery cloth and just sand it a little bit, make certain that it's nice and smooth. So this is a brake lubricant, and it's good for the caliper slides. See? Come in close, you'll see. This is brake, brake lubricant, and that's what you use on caliper slides. It doesn't take a whole lot. I'm going to lubricate the slides here. That right there, real good. So the next thing we want to do is we want to take our caliper here. I'm going to turn it on its side. In fact, let me, let me set this up a little higher, put it a little higher here. I'm going to set it on its side, right? And we're going to take the brake shoes off. All right, now I'm going to pull this one, the front one, out. You've got to push forward. Okay, and you can take a look at this. You can see how bad it was. There's really nothing left. Look at that. I'm going to grab a new brake pad so I can show you what a good brake pad looks like in comparison. <laughs> this is a new one. I want you to look at the difference, okay, in thickness. So, it definitely was time to, to, to remove it. This one. Now, the next thing is... Before we remove the second brake pad, okay, it's laying against, this is a piston here, all right? And that piston closes, it's, it collapses, and then it opens as the brake shoes wear, all right? Now, if I don't close this piston up, 
we won't be able to get the caliper back on the on the rotor. We leave this we leave this brake pad on all right take a C-clamp and we're going to tighten it up slowly okay so once the piston is depressed like it is then you can remove the C-clamp. Now another thing I want to mention about when you start depressing the piston it shoots brake fluid back through the line up toward the reservoir. Remember I had you take the cap off the reservoir? Just keep your eye on it because you don't want it to overflow. Now I'm going to take off the C-clamp. Now I'm going to remove this uh, brake uh, pad from the, the piston and you just pull out. And it pops out just like that. Now what I want to say is when you put the new brake uh, pad on. Make certain that you install the new brake shoes just in the same manner. See where you've got the uh, notch here, you got a notch there, and but up at the top you have like like a half a notch. Take it, line it up. There we go. There's one. So we're going to put the next piece on and um, these little dots here, you want them to line up with the dots here, look. Come on around. So there's a little indentation, a little dot here. Okay, so our, our brake uh, pads are on. So what we have here is we have our caliper pens. They're, they're inside this little rubber boot. What has to happen is this caliper, okay, with its brakes, it needs to be able to slide back and forth freely. And what you have to check is you have to make certain that your caliper slide pins, they're inside these little rubber boots, that they move freely. If they don't, then they really should be um, replaced and lubricated. Okay, so when these pins don't move freely and they're frozen, you can get uneven wear on your rotor and on your brakes. So it moves freely. That's what you want. Now let me say this. If your pins get stuck, okay, because sometimes they'll get stuck, if this pin doesn't slide, the caliper pin does not slide back and forth smoothly, you're going to have to lube the pin. Slide this jacket back just a little bit so you can see. See, that's what that pin looks like. And you can pull the pin out, lubricate it, and reinsert it. Or you can buy new pins. Mind, if you use new pins, you got to lubricate those new pins too, just like you would lubricate the old ones. And they're inexpensive. New uh, caliper pins will run you no more than $10. I think mine cost me 5 Okay, so I've got the new rotor here, and before I put it on, I made certain that I wiped it off really well because, you know, they pack it with, uh, they ship it with oil on it so it doesn't rust in the warehouse. Because how would you feel if you got a rusty, rusty rotor? You, you would feel like maybe uh, it wasn't brand new. So just make certain that you wipe all the oil off the front and the back too, okay, before you put it on, uh, put it on the car. Now that's what I'm going to do now. And now it's time to put our uh, caliper back on top of our rotor, okay? Okay, now I'm going to put it on, in place. You want to make certain it sits right on that notch there. So I'm going to just push the it forward. Got it on there pretty good. It, as you can see, it's is riding the glide there. See where the brake uh, pads are riding the glide? That's the position you want it in. Push forward on the caliper here. I'm going to push forward on the caliper a little bit. Give it a little pressure and then start to thread it. Okay, so once you uh, have your pins in place, you, you remember you've got the top uh, bolt and then you have the bottom bolt, but make certain that you're not that you don't cross thread, all right? And then slowly start to tighten them. Now, I will say that lining them up uh, could be a little bit of a challenge. All 
Okay, so now it's time to put the tire back on. I gotta tell you, this is part of the job that I don't like because these tires weigh a lot. I'm gonna just put these lug nuts on hand tight. Then I'm gonna tighten them slightly with the um, lug wrench. Then I'm gonna have to torque these these uh, lug nuts up to spec. So what I want to do is I just want to tighten them enough to lower the vehicle to the ground because you know right now the Jeep is still up. Okay, so I've got my torque wrench because I'm going to have to torque these uh, lug nuts. I'm going to put the torque wrench on. It's already set to the specifications and I'm going to listen for that first click. Once I hear it click, I know that it's torqued to spec. That was one. Okay, so the fluid level is fine. I'm gonna put the cap back on. Now this is something that anyone can do, including you. Look, I'm nobody special here, all right? After watching this video, you may feel like I'm ready to do it. 